You can repeat whatever I say. I mean, I will tell you exactly. 29th of April. Was that a Wednesday? Thursday? Did you hear what happened to me because of being at the Beverly Hills Hotel? Well, I don't know if you know, but I do a lot of publicity and a lot of television all the time. I mean, I do shows on real estate and shows on silicon. I mean, they call me to Washington. I've been on 60 Minutes. I started the fight for silicon, making it illegal. A lot of interviews. And they interviewed me when the hotel closed because I ate lunch there every day for 36 years. I ate lunch there for 36 years. But apparently, when I've never, and I was also married to Gig Young, and there was a big scandal, and then they wrote a book about him. So they interview me for that. So when they call me to interview me, I'm never sure what it's going to be for, whether it's real estate, which I love to do, silicone, I do to help other people, because I was such a victim. I was paralyzed for one year. I just said, what can I give back to the world? Because what? All I had was injections to give me cheekbones, nothing more. So I went on this crusade in between my work. So I'm used to doing television. I'm pretty good. And I would never hurt anybody, do anything wrong. But apparently when I did the interview, it didn't come out right. You know, sometimes things are taken out of context. And then let me tell you what happened on Thursday. Well, uh, maybe I should lead up to it to explain why I said what I did and how frightened. Well, it was the day of the riot. We were sitting here, safe and sound, in Beverly Hills. And this was like 1.30, 2 o'clock, because it started slowly and was building. And there were people in the office yelling, look out the window, we see smoke. <clears throat> well, my father died when I was eight, but I think it was a heart attack. You know, it's funny, because back in the 60s, you know, everybody seemed like when someone died, it was like heart attack, heart attack, everybody was heart attack. You know, my oldest sister, she said, a dad died of a broken heart. And you know, being older now, no, she meant by a broken heart. You know, he couldn't provide for us the way to elective. And I just, you know. To this day, still in the back of my head, was that he died of a broken heart. So I grew up basically out of father, gone an older brother. Uh, he went into the military. And I remember when I saw him in that uniform. Uh, to me, God, that to me that was it was meant a lot. I mean, I mean, wow! Look at all those buttons and all those ribbons, and and being from a small little farming town, I never seen something like that. You know, you know, the local police didn't. You know, it wasn't. Wasn't a real sharp type, you know. Nice dress, your your tie, your your gig, your lines are straight, you know. Your your, your gum belts is nice and shiny. Your shoes, you know. And it wasn't like 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 out here, or your big metropolitan cities where you look sharp. But his uniform, well, it, it was impressive. Right now in America, there isn't a family. We may have a good GNP, but not a family to come home to. We can't live in our own house. That's what the LA riots is about. We can't live. Our own house burning. You know, this isn't somebody else's house, it's our house. This is the city we are living in, it's our house. Right, start a fire in the basement. And you know, nobody is gonna be left on the top floor. It's one house. And shutting the door in your room, it doesn't matter. You know, the fact is you have a greater sense of getting incinerated. And, and then a couple days later, our senior hall came to see me. And then, about then, I, uh, I started to get it. You know, and, and by the time I left Daniel Freeman Hospital, I, I knew what happened. You know, except they, they wouldn't let me watch it on TV. 
You know, I mean, they completely controlled that remote control thing. They just had it on a movie station. You know, and, and talking to Titus and Bobby and Terry and Lee, that's the four people uh, who came to my rescue. You know, they're telling me things that I never, ever would have known. Terry I met only because she came as a surprise guest visit to the hospital. Oh, and that was an emotional time. I mean, how do I say that someone saved my life? You know, how does a person, how do I, how, how do I express enough uh, thanks? for someone risking their neck for me. And I was just a little, I, I don't know if, um, if afraid is the word. I just, I felt a little, uh, felt a little awkward meeting people who, uh, who saved me. You know, meeting them was not like meeting a stranger, but it was like meeting a buddy. There's a, a weird common thread in our lives. And, and here's four people who, who've seen it on TV and said enough's enough and came to my rescue. Lee Ewell, uh, that's a woman. She told me she just cradled me. And there's no passenger seat in the truck. So I was just on my knees in the middle of the floor and Lee's covered in blood, and Titus is on one side and telling Bobby where to go because Bobby couldn't see out the front windshield because the front windshield was so badly broken, and Titus is just on the running board telling him where to go. And Terry, Titus's girlfriend, she's in front of the truck just driving through traffic, dodging towards cars to get them to, to kind of move out the way. And, uh, and the next stop was Daniel Freeman Hospital. Someday, when I... Uh, when I uh, get a house, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have one of those rooms, and it's gonna be of all the, the riot stuff. And it won't be, it won't be a blood and guts memorial. It, it'll be of, it won't be a sad. It'll just be, it'll be a happy room. It'll be a place where, where a guy can go in there and and just and just have a good old time. It'll be of all the love and compassion and and all the letters from faraway places and, and framed places, just framed things, and it'll just be nice to be in there, you know?